Mm. Set it and forget it. Oh God. <laughs> so y'all wanna y'all wanna cook a whole turkey in three and a half hours? Hi y'all, my name is Ron Popeil. Yeah. I know it's 237 in the morning. But y'all wanna buy a rotisserie grill that you can cook uh, nine lamb chops in the blood. Bro, let me like you give some context. We were talking about infomercials before the show started when we were in pre-production. And like some of them things on there, I'm like eight years old. I'm sitting there like, yo, man, I need this. Like you talk about the, the rotisserie oven. I was like, I was like 25. I was like, hey man, six payments of, of $29.99. I'm like, that's not bad, bro. But uh, yo, and that comes with the little spray on hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you can spray on the hair on your bald spot and coat it. Like, I get a food dehydrator. Like, yo, you like beef jerky? <laughs> like, make your own beef jerky, my son. So, what the hitty? Like, oh no, that's not hitty, big dog. You know what I'm saying? Payday ain't until Friday. Nah. <laughs> this is polyum uh, masonium. Yo. Yo, who? Yo, well, remember the whole like? Remember you can just get a whole no? Yeah, we uh, what we did like a minute forty one. Yeah, he like, said remember the whole fucking knife where you can just drop a whole tomato on that motherfucker. It's like, Phew. he was like, oh, I need them knives. I can kill three people with them. And it comes with yo, shit. <laughs> yo, we need to start. We need to start doing infomercials for the show. Just start dropping them randomly on the, on the, on the page. <laughs> hey, yo. This is Paul Masson right here. <laughs> you want a drink? But you only got 933. Hey, listen. Here you go. Just don't just don't drive. Always your responsibility, you guys. I'm saying public enemies did not um <laughs> condone drinking and driving. Always get an Uber, always drink water, and always do it in the safety of your own house. Y'all you know I mean look, we ready, yeah. blood. We already media trend. Look, we ready. Yeah. Speaking of ready, you ready to get the show started? Yeah, you, you hit the button. button. Yeah, hit the button. Yeah, let's not forget it this time. All right, I got you. You ain't know a little. <laughs> and then listen, <laughs> listen, listen. We are. What the hell? What Monte said. He was, <laughs> he was like, "It's free." Yo, hit the like. Yo, hit the like. Subscribe. Notification to hit the bell for notifications because we are back for a brand new episode of the Public Enemies Podcast. What is this? Two eighty. Two. Two eighty gram. It's two eighty. Look at the show notes, man. Look no, at the, man, that's why. That's fuck. why we I, have a group check. It is episode two hundred and eighty. Blood. I be work. Blood. I gotta go to work in the morning. Look, listen, you and Grand just be having a good old time in the chat when I be sleeping. I'm supposed to be sleeping before the two hours. I gotta get up and take a shower and go to work. I'm like, listen, zzz, 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 zzz. look at these niggas here. They having a good old time over here talking. You know what I mean? But yeah, look, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, people with jobs, people that are employed, people still paying off the PPP loans. Because you're going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> jail. Guess who's going to jail tonight? Unless you listen to us, y'all. We are the PE3, the Public Enemies Podcast. I am Graham. I mean, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I am the champ, your champ. The tyrant known as Jizzle. Gotta turn this way. Look at that. That's Ben right there. He's a benevolent one. You know what I'm saying? We were just we were just talking about yo, if you knew the stuff that we were just talking about, yeah. mostly by Eddie Winslow being a fraud. I had to see another episode where you just ruined a whole bunch of other yo, he just ruined shit. He ruined shit more than Urkel. But yeah. Yeah, we are here. Graham is on the way. Don't worry about what Graham is. Graham is minding his business, but just know that he's going to be on the way. But he told me to personally tell y'all that subscribe to the Patreon because there's a new episode of PE3SPN 
Steve Young edition where me and Ben were just fucking just oh my god I was late and shit yeah and speaking of the Patreon we got some new content coming towards that man we got me and CJ gonna uh, we're gonna be doing a review show of Invincible <sighs> you look when you do it last week by watching the Japanese on accident you know we're going to be sitting there. We're going to be reviewing the entire season two from week to week. And then after season two is over, we're going to go back and review season one of Invincible. Oh, yeah. So, so, y'all, so, so y'all be on the lookout for that. There's really something that, uh, we, that we're looking forward to doing. I know we wanted to do that last season, but we didn't have the Patreon up and running last time. Um, Invincible had put out a season, but, you know, we're going to do it now. We gonna do it now. Now is the right time. Yeah, you know, the time is now. Shout out to um, Jonathan. You can't see now. And uh, yeah, that's coming. You know what I'm saying? Graham's over there doing his thing. Like I should know the name of this. I'm drunk, <laughs> so I don't know the name. But he he does his show where he goes by himself, which is the hardest thing to do. And he lets y'all know what time it is. Like, listen, we're gonna pay. Listen, subscribe. Tell your people to subscribe. We're gonna pay attention to it more. Like it's been, it's been like everybody's been like been at baby. Grand working graveyards, and I had fucking, yeah, it's a lot. fucking, but yeah, a lot of stuff going on. But we got y'all, and that's why we are here to give you yes, guys sir. this Wednesday night crack for your hump day pause. Yo, chill. Hey, <laughs> hey, you wanna you wanna get small packages? Was new. Dun, 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 dun. Niggas, here's some news for y'all, bitch ass. Do, 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 do. Look at the okay. champ. Look at my jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck Hulk Hogan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's okay. not in the song, y'all. But, you know. That's not in the song. It should be in the song, but it's not in the song. <laughs> hey. I don't like Did it. you see that uh, Zach Efron and the cast of Iron Claw? Yeah. They want to step into a ring for real. They said they want to wrestle for real. They are open to wrestling. Uh, I'm not. I would. I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I, I like to be. Honest with you, I would not be opposed to that. I think uh, AEW would be the spot to do that because that movie's kind of darker. Well, I, no, you could do it in WWE because remember when uh, the wrestler came out and they did all that like promotional oh, stuff. Yeah, and Mickey Rourke out there. Yo, that was WrestleMania really 25. Little- I was, I was <laughs> funny you bring that up, Ben. I was there that time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you were. I was there, you know what I mean? Chris Jericho got punched in his mouth by uh, Mickey Rourke for some reason. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? He had three gold teeth in his mouth. But uh, yeah, that would be perfect. You know, AEW would definitely. And, and, and MJF's in the movie. Yo, who, who's going to, yo, we're going to find out who loves Von Eric's more. Who's gonna pay for that match? It's like, do you have it in blood and guts, or do we have it in AEW? Seems like the spot to have it, though. I know it seemed like a little teaser with them, with them niggas just sitting around eating ribs and shit. And I was like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? Look at these niggas eating ribs all seductively. And I was like, see, this is why we're gonna give people the internet. Yeah, facts, <laughs> big facts. Yo, yo, shout out, yo, shout out to the movie, man. Yo, facts, like I'm. I, I'm trying to convince my wife to go see it. I'm telling her, I'm like, yeah, but like Zach Efron's in it to kind of like trick her into go seeing that. But I know that movie's going to be emotional trauma from beginning, middle to end. Yo, I'm definitely, no, I'm going to tell my girl, no, she's going to have to watch it. If I had to watch the Barbie movie, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the Barbie you're... movie was good. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, she might, I mean, the Von Eric movie might be good. It's the Von Eric. Look, baby, it's, it's, a, be it's a family. It's a family. I thought you it's, said you like Bret Hart. <laughs> This is way more sad. I was like, not really. But, you know. It's, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. This is going to be a great movie. Look, it's Zac Efron. It's like you said. Like, I think I'm going to take your approach. You're right. But, yo, it's Zac Efron, man. Like, they like it, it, they they see it and they just automatically like, yo, man, I'll go see that. Even if the movie even if the movie's complete garbage. Like, uh, what was the name of that other movie that he was in? Um, Baywatch. Uh, what was it? Huh? Baywatch. Baywatch. Like he play, like he been in a bunch of like shitty movies, and people will go see him because it's like because it's Zac Efron. But this one I think is gonna be good because the studio that is known for the studio that's um, putting out this movie be putting out heat. I think they did um, Uncut Gems, 
So oh, I'm, conf- okay. I'm confident this movie is going to be good. No, they got some, um, even, um, I don't know who's playing, who's playing the, like, I, there's, there's somebody else that's bigger than Zach Efron. I forgot his son's name. I'm just, I'm just. Oh, dude from the bear? Yeah, dude from every, yo, this, this, uh, it's, this is a big deal, yo. Like, this is like, they can win, they can win some awards from this shit. Like, I, I fuck with, um, I fuck with shit like this, especially if you if you know the story. Like people that know the story, like this is gonna bring wrestling fans out. Like Biggie Smalls fans came out when Notorious came out, not for the Tupac movie. But that shit was terrible. But like the NWA movie, like this shit's gonna bring out the wrestling fans. Like and if you support wrestling, go watch that shit. And uh, yeah, man, this is a this is one of the stories that that really this is like one of the backbone stories of wrestling. And I'm glad that it's finally. I'm finally about to come out because I need to see this shit, and then she's gonna have to cry. It's like I'm gonna cry. Oh yeah, yeah. We all we all gonna be doing some crying. Uh, moving right along with small package news. What else we got on the docket? Uh, Alex Hammerstone. Speaking of Alex crying, Hammerstone, yo, chill. <laughs> Alex Hammerstone put out a video today, and he stated and pretty much said that uh, MLW has not granted him his release. He uh, he had posted on his Twitter like a couple weeks ago that he wanted to be released from uh, MLW, that he, you know, he wanted to go off and do his own thing. And uh, he posted in there that he hasn't really had much contact with MLW or the, or the, um, the front office at MLW. He said he hasn't been um, active on the roster in over 100 days. He said that he feels like they're ducking and dodging him and he said he feels like they're punishing him for requesting his release and that they've apparently told people and uh different news outlets and wrestling that they have no plans to release him so uh you know hope everything works out for him over there and whatever he wants to do but yeah the, the james harden of wrestling you know what i mean yo chill uh, there's, there's uh, like it, him and it's a few others that like have requested that that have requested their release. Uh, like we said um, a few weeks ago, there are a few others. Uh, I don't know if this is like if this is a bad sign or whatever, but you know we'll see. We'll see what's going on with that. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying. Hopefully, you get what you want. Everybody should be able to do whatever they want, especially if you're a, I'm saying you're you're a big player like Big Al. And say even though gang don't like you, so you know what I mean. But you know. I mean, hopefully you get what you want. You can um, say pursue your your future endeavors somewhere when they'll tell you to pursue your future endeavors another time. Yo. Well, it, it is what it is, man. I think I think after a while, you know, they'll just end up they'll end up just letting him go because when wait no, I don't I don't know because he deleted the video. He deleted the video that was on like that was on it because I was watching it and I was like, oh, I was at work and I was like, oh shit, I was like. I want to see what he's saying. And then I had, when I went to go back to look at it, like hours later, it had under there, like tweet has been deleted and I couldn't access the video, but I saw it on another page. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what that means, but. That must be all my uh, Daryl Morey because you're saying nobody seems to, um, their stars always seem like them. Yo, like I said, we we will talk about MLW uh, a little bit later because they, you know, they had some, some goings on this (laughs) week too. So, uh, Yo, Tony said it. Tony said Hammerstone looks like an impact superstar. Yep. Yeah. And we said it last week. CJ won't watch him over there either because he doesn't watch, I'm, I'm doesn't watch Impact or TNA. And I love how you how you do this. You're like, yeah, man, they should go over to Impact. And yeah, like, and then, are and you then gonna I watch go. them over there? And you're like, sure. No. <laughs> what no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, sure, yeah, I'll watch them over there. And we both know damn well. But listen, you know, I know I know Trinity's over, over there. there. All right. Bro, sure, I'm sure. sorry. I'm sorry. I like yo. We we I I'll catch it, but you know Thursday night football is on. You know it, it's a bullshit game this week. It's what the Browns versus who? Well, yeah, it's the Browns versus you know what I mean um, Hammerstone. And like I don't know, like man, listen, man, look, what do you want me to do? Like it's all access. Like that's one of them channels where I have to buy like Vice and shit for that. Like I don't want that, man. You ain't got Dee Samara on there no more. So like, why won't buy Vice and then get access? You ain't even got the good shows on there. They used to have Howard Stern and shit on there. I'm like, man, come on, man. You, that, that's where you're going to put them. Might as well put them niggas on the CW. 
They got they got yeah, openings. We'll, we'll over get there. to that. We'll get Shoot. we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But uh, do you wanna you wanna talk about AEW tonight? I'm saying that's how you, that's AEW. Yeah, talk, talk about AEW, man. The AEW had a packed show tonight. They had a good card tonight. They started it off with Daniel Garcia versus MJF. Okay. For the AEW world title. And that match was heat from beginning to end. I was like, damn. I was like, they they were doing uh they were doing like picking body parts, like uh Daniel Garcia was selling the arm the whole time. He did a one arm, uh he did a one arm pile driver. <laughs> wait, 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 one arm pile wait, driver. Wait. He uh What's the- Oh, because he like, like I don't know. Being worked on. You know what I'm saying? He had him in the he had him in the Fuji Walmart. Like, yo. Yo, no, shout out to DJ, like, he, he he was holding his arm like this while he was doing the pile driver. And it was and shout out to G Nation. G Nation says a much better show tonight than last week. It was. It yeah, really I was, was. It's almost like they heard what y'all said. You know, he gave he gave him a we the people pile driver. Like, yo, what do we got going? Yo, shout out to Daniel Garcia for the culture, man. Exactly what I had Yo. on. Yo, MJF uh, yeah. That, right? yeah, MJF, he won the match. And uh, after that, we kind of, after that, they moved on. Uh, we're going to go through the mention things and note. Uh, Samoa Joe had a mat, had a, had a banger with Keith Lee, man. Bruh, man. Something like absolute, like the match was chef's kiss. And because I don't like I, I we haven't seen Keith Lee have like a spot on uh, dynamite like this in a while. It's been a minute because like I remember like he, he shows up from time to time when they're doing like a battle royal or they're doing like a multi-man tag match or whatever. Sometimes he might have a match here and there, but it's nothing like really too big or anything like that. And it doesn't really last that long. And he's not really showing like a prominent role in the match. But this match between him and Samoa Joe, I was like, yo, it's a powerhouse match. Um, and it, it was good from start to finish as well. Like I said, they really like they turned all that shit up tonight. Like yeah. for real, like they and that's a, they that's was a different it. that's a different type type of styles make matchups because it's two it's two big veterans. You know what I'm saying? That can move. You know what I mean? Like like especially the way I see everybody sucking like uh, like oh my god, look at all the big guys doing stuff. Like yo, this is the match that you want to see. This is not just big beady men slapping me. This is beat, beady men slapping meat paws, I'm saying, with some flips in it. Yeah, facts. And like, you know what I mean? It's some, some rep souls. Yo, they, they, they were all over the place, but uh, Samoa Joe ended up choking out Keith Lee to retain Damn. the title. And then right after the match, what he did, Samoa Joe relinquished the television title, the Ring of Honor television title. He sat that down in the middle of the ring. He was like, I don't even want this. He was like, I don't really want this anymore because the next goal that I have on my arm should be and will be the AEW World's Heavyweight Championship. Oh, damn. So, MJF, damn, bro. Why, why everybody want to beat your ass? Something like you're the world champion or something. I'm like, bro, you know, I thought that was like, I was like, oh, you know, he, he don't even want this. He said, like, this title is beneath him. Whatever, whatever. But, bro, why did you go through the trouble of defending the belt if you were just going to be like, yeah, man, you, I'm just going to get rid of this shit. You could have you could have handed it to Keith Lee. You could have like, hey, bro, look, take this. Like, hey, man, you you have, you have this now. And it's so like, nah, I don't even want this now, right? shit. He's a champ now, uh, right? Like, that's that's the rules. Yo, you remember when uh, Dolph Ziggler won the United States Championship and he relinquished it for whatever reason, and then they were like, they didn't do anything with that. I know this isn't the same thing as that, but I got those kind of vibes from it when I was watching. I was like, uh, okay, are, are, are we going to follow through on it this time? I'm like, I, I have PTSD from that. No, it reminds me of when Shane Douglas, you know what I'm saying, shout out to my wrestling historians out there. We're going to go way, way, way back. When Shane, oh. Douglas won the, when Shane Douglas won the NWA Championship and he was like, yo, Fuck this belt. I'm the ECW championship. <laughs> I'm the ECW champion now. Yo, he he dropped the belt in the track, dropped the belt in the brown like bag, whatever. He's like, get this yeah, shit out of here. Yo, yo, get this away from me. I'm the franchise. I'm the ECW Eastern Championship Wrestling. They were like, yo, who the fuck is that? And then, <laughs> but I mean, 
Like he's gonna skip right past the um, Ring of Honor um, heavyweight champion. He was like, "Yo, yo, get that out of like, here!" Man. I don't even want that shit. He was like, "Just get me straight to the to the title, man." But uh, we had other we had other things going on on this show as well. Uh, let me see. We had uh, Swerve yeah. versus. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah, <laughs> we had Swerve. Let me find it. I want to find it. Yeah, we had Swerve in a great match against. Um, let me find. Let me pull it up. I'm sorry. I'm got. I got brain fog. We are, we are just embobulated, man. Our leader's not here. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, I'm, we sorry. Penta. I'm sorry. He had a great match against Penta, man. And they, like, again, they was they was bouncing off the wall. They was doing everything they do. I need about two more of them matches, man. I need two more. I need two more of them Swerve and Pentagon matches because they were just, they were, they were firing on all cylinders, man. And after the match was over, uh, Hangman came down and he put, he put Swerve through a table. He did like the he he put him through a table head first. Hangman should be everywhere that Swerve is at. Like though, you stood over my kid and told a story about me. Hangman, you the, I, look, shout out to Hangman for standing on business because yo, damn, thanks. yo, 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 straight up. You know what I mean? Like you want you, you want a drama, AEW haters. You, 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 you want storytelling? What's more storytelling than somebody standing over your kid tell them a story about you? Think about that. I want you to think about that, and then get back to us in the comments. Yo, know, bro. Like I, I was like I was waiting for this moment to happen. I was like, you can't like, bro. You can't let this man do that shit to you. Breaking the eyes, do all that, and then not get him back because he 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 was talking shit last week. He was like, hey, bro, look. Look, man, I, you, see, you see me, I was at your house last week and he ran out of the match and everything like that. But this week he was like, yo, man, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Look, go yo, team kill spy shot. at your kid. Kill shot versus, Pen- versus Pentagon Jr. Yeah, match. Yeah, it was definitely match of the night. Definitely match of the night. Yo, so, so, like, so like Swerve is the best one over there now, right? Yeah, swerve like like like, can we, can like we start that narrative. I'm starting that narrative right now, y'all. Hey, listen, swerve is the best one over there. Like Maybe. we asked last week, like who y'all think should be the next champ? Like it was an overwhelming response of swerve last week when we asked the question of the week, man. Like at, like swerve is doing his thing over there, man. Like he, I he, I, I love killing. being proven wrong because I was definitely one of the ones I was like ah. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to support my niggas because you know what I'm saying real niggas do real things. You know what I'm saying I love all black people doing the stuff that I love. And he's really, 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 really amazing. But, you know, like he's really made not just the most, but just like because everybody put a, like everybody puts a ceiling on you when you, when you when you resign somewhere, no matter what. No matter it's just like you could be here or you could be the best ever. Like they always put a ceiling on you. He broke through that ceiling. Right when everybody said that he was one of the ones that's being wasted over there, and yeah, I mean, like that's he, that's I my mean, favorite part about it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, but, um, it, it took him a minute to kind of get to this point and kind of figure out what he wanted to do because you see, like in the beginning, like he had that a stable going on, and it, it really wasn't like it really wasn't it. Like you, you, you remember it. The mobile embassy? No, the it, yeah. What was the name of the uh, the white dude that that they said like Brock Lesnar or whatever? Any name? You talking about uh, what's that? What's that? His name? Name. He's, 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 name. he's in he's in the other group. Oh, I was just talking about Brian Cage. No, he didn't have Brian Cage in this group. No, he had Harlan. Yeah, I think he had Harlan in this group for a little. Yeah, bit. yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, it, he was he was putting the pieces together, and now like he's found his way with mogul with the um, mogul embassy and with Prince Nana, and it's, been, it's 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 been it's been a pleasure to see him put together the pieces and kind of be like, okay, well, this is what I need to do. This is what I'm going to do moving forward. And now he's coming into his own, and like Prince Nana thing, the whole dance is taking over. Yeah, he's he's definitely next up. I think he should be the the champion after MJF. 
Like some type of way, we got to get it on him. We got to, like you said, we got to start that narrative. Yo, if he's a real good guy, MJF, if you're a real, I'm saying, good guy face of the company, there's no better foil than than um, than Swerve. Like yo, Swerve, yo, Swerve is damn near the best bad guy in the business. God, I hate calling it the business. It make me feel hella old. But oh, yeah, 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 man, I want to be that too. The man. business, you fucking yo. nerd. Oh, kayfabe, you know what I'm saying? Set it and forget it. And look, you say you say you, you niggas, you niggas, do you niggas want beef jerky, nigga? <laughs> What's more American than beef jerky? Yo, he is the he's the best. Yo, he's he's the best one over there right now, man. I don't care what none of y'all say. And uh, nice. uh can we see up? what else we got in here? Uh, Tony Storm will be challenging Sheeta for the AEW Women's Championship and the Charlie Chaplin match. Yo, and the Charlie Chaplin match is crazy. Yo, black and white, you know what I'm saying? At full and, and they'll be having a match at full gear. I'm sorry, I left that out, but yeah, they'll be having the full. They're having the full. They're having the match at full gear. I'm sorry, I can't talk tonight. My bad. But uh, eleven o'clock. But yeah, man. Yeah, it's eleven o'clock over here. <laughs> but uh, let me see what else we have on the show. They finished out the show with. Uh, they finished out the show with the tag. No, 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 not tag match. They finished out the show with. Um, New with, shit. Yeah, they finished out the show with uh, with with Mark Briscoe versus uh, with Mark Briscoe versus Jay White. Hey, and bro, like, they don't they don't that don't belong to him. Shout out to yeah. Jay White standing on business. Like yo, Jay, Jay White said no business too. I saw your belt. Come get it back. Yeah, Jay White just, just took the belt, ran with it, and after that, he's been like, he's just been like, MJF been like, give it back! The whole your time. Mama, your, mama, your, mama said, your mama said that you gotta give me my belt back. You need to come get it, then. Man. Yo. He gotta start, he, he gotta call Stelio Contos, man. That's all you need. Yo, chill. What's, what's the name of the bully from uh, the Boone Dots that took Riley Chain? <laughs> yo, Bush Magnus. <laughs> yo, yo. He, needs, he needs to call Bush Magnus. Yo, all the nah. Jay White is Bush Magnus. Yo, Jay White is Bush Magnus. Like, yeah, you know, I took his belt. You know what I'm saying? He got Burberry on it, but you know what I'm saying? He gave me about 10 grand. You know what I'm saying? I give it back to him. Yo, MJF gonna get that belt back. And he's like, <laughs> man, I found out this gold ain't even real gold, man. <laughs> yo, bro, bitch. <laughs> Yo, Jay White being Butch Magnus is the greatest thing that I've ever discovered about wrestling because that's what he is. Yo, yeah, why you do he that? Took the, took the belt and ran off, man. But uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, also on the show, Red Velvet made her return. She ended up losing to Julia Hart. Uh, looks like they're setting up Julia Hart versus Chris Statlander for the TBS title, probably at full gear. Uh, but yeah, this is a good show, a lot better than last week. Um, they did like dueling promos between uh, John Moxley and uh, and Juice Robinson. Not Juice Robinson. What am I talking about? <laughs> Orange Juice Cassidy. <laughs> Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Hey, man. Listen, you gotta, you Orange gotta... Juice. Like I know what it is, man. Listen, man. I'm here for you, man. We are. We are. Bad, we bro. are a team. You know what I'm saying? NBA Jam. We are NBA jamming it tonight. Shut up, yo. What do you? Like that's 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 a low key little rivalry that's been building that you can be like oh yeah and the thing is it's starting to look like it's starting to look like Orange Cassidy is like turning heel a little bit it looks like he's inching towards being a heel it's like he's like just tipping over the line we've seen him cut more promos and talk a little bit more and step into like into like the darker side because he was like hey bro look. Second time around, y'all thought I y'all thought I was stomping out niggas before. The second time around, it's y'all ass. I know. Sometimes you got and like Orange Cassidy deserves to be able to want be the one to drop his fucking like yo. They like yo, you you talking to blood? Just been in this fucking belt every fucking week, nigga. I used to carry this fucking AEW on my fucking back though. Just like Greg Jennings and Madden. Like, like what, what 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 are you talking about? Like. Yo, there's a chance that there's a, there's a way that you can say I was the greatest champion of this of this year. 
Yeah. Like you, like you can say that, like, like, and then you, you win the bet off me because they always give the belt to you because you're the, like, 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 if he'd have called John Moxley the Charlotte Flair of AEW, like, it'd have been chef's kiss. But <laughs> that's what I said. Like every time yeah, you gotta get the bet on somebody, they, they, they gotta give it to you. you yo, know, you they're not gonna. Go. Hey, they're not gonna say that Charlotte Flair comment because that would be disrespectful to the man that they signed uh, last week to a multi-year contract. Rick Flair, but they signed, but he gave his he he sold every single piece of his integrity away signing this deal multi year multi year to a do what multi a multi year deal like last week uh, we had talked about uh, we had talked about Dave Meltzer reporting that Rick Flair was going to be on AEW TV until like March of twenty twenty four, but he signed that. a multi year deal. Now, they're not like like I said, I don't know what the end game is for this. They're probably gonna pair him with Santos and be like, yo, man, that's my father in law. I think the long term game here is to get Charlotte over there. It's like, yo, man, we got your whole family over here, bro. You might as well you might as well jump ship. Yo, El Idolo, he can definitely look. I had your last match technically, so we can we can do that. Do they trade like so like would that be like a um uh, Yo, trading Charlotte for Jay Cargill is uh, it's like trading for the like the number one overall pick with the um, veteran that won a couple Super Bowls. I mean, it's a you know you get you it's a, you it's get a good one trade. for the other, but then but then you get like you know what I'm saying like it comes like like you know what I'm saying like <laughs> Rick Flair's like Gronk, you know what I mean? Like he's there, you know what I'm saying? So I come with Rick, and then like in my um, but no, they, they I think they might be on the outs. So like, who knows? Like, he might not even want them over there no more. Yeah, you know, but I thought like I'm like, bro, I really, I really don't want to see this over there. And it was like, it was a backlash from fans too. Like I, I didn't see like any like positive. Like, yo, man, Ric Flair's over here. He could really help these guys out. Everybody was like, why the fuck you wasting the the cap space, Tony? <laughs> yo. Yo, this not even like at least Udonis Haslam was over there saying ready to fight niggas for um for Eric Spolstra. Like what Ric Flair gonna do? Like who's he gonna like who's he gonna teach that already don't know what they go is he gonna mentor Nick Wood? Like he's gonna help Sting. Help Sting do what? Like this is what like help Sting <laughs> help Sting the Mount Rushmore, the greatest non W like Sting, like in my eyes, I don't give a fuck with Ric Flair is everyone. I've always felt this way. Sting is the greatest non WWE wrestler of all time, and because he's, he's only WWE. he was only the, he was only in WWE for like nine months though. He pulled right, up, so yeah, you know what I'm saying he's the best, he's the best one ever. And like, what do I need you to help? Muda, like, you're not gonna say Antonio Inoki, you're not gonna say no, any of the guys. You're gonna be like, no, hey, Sting, man, you're not gonna say what's Blade that? You're not gonna say Stan the Lariat Hanson. You're gonna be like, yeah. Man. You're not gonna say, <laughs> so you mean to tell me none of Devon Eric's? Is, is, is it like, no, not Texas Tornado. You know what I'm saying? Not Kev. You know what I mean? None of them. One. You know what I mean? Like, none of them. You know what I mean? Yo, they really Stunner brought in a fake Von Eric. That's crazy, bro. Bro, like, yeah, <laughs> you bring in another, like, yo, man, yo, my brother's sick. You, you think you'd be a Von Eric real quick? Like, yeah, sure. What's your name? You're, you're like, all right, we'll, 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 we'll figure the rest of it out. But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, nigga, uh, let me let, let me think about it. Let me think about it. You you can be uh, Jeff Von Eric. You'll you'll be Jeff Von Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so sounds, right? Josiah, Josiah Von Eric. That's what you're gonna oh be. All God. right. Sure, man. We're saying like so, LeBron Von Eric. That's what you're gonna be. All right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's sick. <laughs> yo, yo, LeBron Von Eric, you saying they say they ain't never heard of that one. But how's Ric Flair gonna help Steve Borden sting? The greatest gimmick to ever live, the greatest build up to ever, a pillar of wrestling. Yo, man, he's do not, what? That, With who? That's Maybe the like, thing, he's not. You gonna put you gonna put him against Luchasaurus? To do what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, but like I don't know who Sting was to go against in this end thing, but like who is Ric Flair gonna counteract? Unless he's fighting Arn Anderson's son who already got released. Mm-mm. 
That shit's gonna be that shit's gonna be crazy. You know, shout out to uh, get the, get the, get the bread, blood. If, if Tony giving out the money, you know, what I mean, just make sure you pay Travis Etn. You know, facts. <laughs> Yo, but I'm like, bro, at, at this point, I'm like, yo, man, y'all, y'all showing y'all, y'all relying a little bit too much on these on these old heads. Cause like I'm seeing Ric Flair show up over there. Y'all got big show coming out there. And I'm like, did you see him walking down the ramp last week? Cause they showed they had a video of him walking down the ramp. <laughs> it looked like sexy red. I love and I love I love Big Show, man. I love I love Paul White. Paul White brought me many years of laughter and joy and everything like that. But look, yo, man, y'all y'all sick for putting that man out there. Even if even if he said he wanted to go out there, y'all got at some point you got to go. Hey, bro, look, you done you did too much for the game for me to let you go out there and do that. You did too much for the people. You did too much for for the big man community. For me to let so, you go out there and do that. Pause. The, yeah, there will be no Luchasaurus without you. There will be no prominent, scary, big seven footers other than Murderhawk, who has no body. Still, I don't know why. Like you need to, you need to, you need to get you some bodies, Murderhawk. We don't need to respect you. Like, well, why are you doing this to our legends? Like, you know who he is. Like, he's like, you know, you know, man, you know, at the picnic, you know, the nigga they always ask to bring bread. They always yeah. bring bread. Or just bring sodas. You know saying you're like you're the most loved one in the family because you put in a lot. I'm like, all right, man, just bring bread. You know what I'm saying? Bring a bucket of chicken. Then you know saying you ain't got to worry about cooking nothing. Blood, you good. That's that's who Paul White is. Paul Wright doesn't need. Listen, you're Captain Insano. You're 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 an icon. Yeah, facts. You know, speaking speaking of iconic, speaking of things that are iconic, man. AEW got a new sponsorship, man. They got a new partner, man. Who they working? You ready? With? You ready? Oh, Sega. Sega. <laughs> Yo, they're working Yo, with Sega. They're, yeah, man, they're working with Sega. And apparently, like, they're shooting, like, some videos or something like that surrounding, like, the, the match that they're going to have with Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Paul White, Kota Ibushi. Like, they're, oh. they're going to promote that. Bro, they're going to turn. With gonna that. Turn, they're going to turn um, Johnny Hungry into fucking Sonic so quick. I mean, like, bro, it's about damn time that they did a, a sponsorship with Sega because, like, if y'all didn't know, Kenny Omega loves, 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 loves video games. And he loves Sega. So this is a this is a match made in heaven. And then on top of that, like, y'all already know, the remember, like, the, the, the gold ring, the brass ring? Um, Yo. Brass ring shit. Those look like the big Sonic rings that you go and then you go to the um the bonus level to get the chaos emerald. That's that shit looks yes. like so this is all coming full circle and I love it. I don't know if they're gonna acknowledge it and everything like that, but I really think that'd be really funny if they did, because that shit I it had to be intentional. Kenny Omega was like, hey bro, like, hey, get, put the Sonic ring up there, bro. Let, bro, let, let is- these niggas fight over the Sonic ring. He didn't say nigga, but you know, I'm I'm saying it for him. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm saying he, he said, "Well, well, can it, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah." In it, you know what I'm saying, let the boy, yo, it, it's coming all oh, full Sonic ring. That shit make like you should have been did this. Uh, this shit is better late than never. Yo, J- yo, John, yo, wait till they make the Dark Order. <laughs> oh my God, you guys gonna be all the Tekken people, you know you. Like I can't like shout out to Tony Khan for bastardizing his company out, even though he said he would never do that. Yo, take the money. Shout out to Sega for Yo. doing something. You got to do something to stay in the game. You know, Mario just came out with a new game. You know what I'm saying they're probably gonna have fucking Eo Sky doing some shit for a fucking match for that shit. So you guys get that in the game. It's like nah, Sega said, "Yo, man, look." Yeah, where do you think we've been putting the money, man? We we drop like classic, we drop like classic re-releases like every year. I'm like, hey, side note, y'all need to stop fucking around. Figure out a way to get me a remastered version of Sonic Heroes. I know people don't like it. That's a that's a game that's near and dear to my heart. Give me a remastered version of that, we'd be all right. But yeah, man, shout out to them landing the deal with Sega. It's good shit. Yo, shout out to Sonic Heroes. Yo, shout out to Sonic Adventure 2 for the Dreamcast. Yo! 
Yo, got me, yo, got me. Look, the first game that I ever sat down, that's when I first started smoking weed. You know what I mean? It was like first game that I ever sat from the beginning and beat it to the end. Yo, sign out to Sonic Adventures. Like, listen, Sega, yo, that's a good idea. AEW does a lot of little shit that just makes you like, yeah, there you go. All right, yeah. So shout out to y'all, man. That's a good ass, that's a good ass fucking deal. Yo, man, facts. Uh, Speaking of Sonic. <laughs> Yo, I don't, I don't have any more segues for anything no. Sonic related, for anything Sega related. I don't have any more segues than that. But um, we could do is we could we we could jump over and start talking about WWE if you want to talk about the Fed. Yeah, we talk about the Fed niggas. Hey yo, hey yo, Vince McMahon, nobody likes you, nigga. You are a liability. Yo, shout out to Vince McMahon being a liability. I love that shit. Yo, that wasn't a. I I, <laughs> I totally forgot to put that on there, but yeah, man, it was like let me look, let me look it up. But yeah, man, like he was apparently they. Yo, TKO said that ahead. you are a liability, people. Yeah, listen, we can't listen. Uh, we don't really talk about him like that. You know what I mean? He's like that uncle. You know what I'm saying? They got the cage in the back. You know what I'm saying that we slide the food underneath the door. Like, look, like he might be like he's he's the part of this other part, but we ain't got this other part. And uh, listen. Yo. Like, like and it, it's wild, like all this stuff coming out. Like they, like TK, TKO, Endeavor, pretty much like they they saw what Vince McMahon was doing. He was selling the company despite Stephanie and Triple H, and and I'm not even gonna say Shane because I don't think Shane was ever gonna get the company. But like he did that despite his children and his son-in-law. And now that it's in the hands of TKO, and they're like, hey man, look. We can't really trust you around here. You are a liability. They told them like a few weeks ago that they thought the stock numbers went down directly because of him. So they were like, hey, bro, look, we just going to put you on ice. Like, it, it, it's kind of crazy to watch it like all of this like fall through. Because yeah. I honestly, like, a lot of people thought like it was going to be full steam ahead with him because, like, you know, UFC, when they, when Dana White sold UFC, to endeavor, they were just like, hey, bro, like you can keep doing what you're doing. Dude, Dana White didn't have a whole bunch of fucking, he didn't have four decades of fucking fuckery behind him. You know what I'm saying? He just said some questionable shit and it was like, yo, everybody likes Dana White. You know what I'm saying? Dana White is just like, yo, he, he just speaks his mind. Like, Vince McMahon was a, like, yo, if Vince McMahon would have came out with this bullshit back in 98 through 2003 when he was a uh, Mr. McMahon, the character, they probably just swept it under the rug like they do with Dana White shit. But uh, it's just, I mean, everybody knew he was a liability for all the stuff that was going on and in general. Yo. But how do you. G Nation, G Nation, like you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say that after um, after CJ uh, caught his breath oh, yeah. for a second. But yeah, like, yo, he's a liability. Dana White's not a liability for slapping his wife, like, in, in full camera view. And Look, Dana, like, just like, Dana hey, White was Dana White was the seaside of that deal. Like Dana White, Dana White's been the seaside of the fucking of the UFC since 1999, when the Fertitas in the bottom. Like the Fertitas put that money in there. Like Dana White is the one nigga that put the uh, like you know the nigga that paid a um, hundred dollars, but it's a hundred and one thirteen, and he put the one thirteen on there. But he was yeah. the one that gave the presentation of the of the fucking like he's the one that gets the presentation. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to talk in front of the class. But he'll do it because he ain't got nothing to lose. Like, Dana White had nothing to lose. He was a boxer nigga. And then, look, like, you get some of the, listen, fucking Vince McMahon fucking called John Cena the nigga on fucking TV. Yeah, yeah you see that? You yeah. see that in your face, too, right? I bet you more people yeah, seeing John Cena say that, say that to John Cena than um, <coughs> what uh, Dana White did. Like, all them niggas yeah. in the same blood. It's just that Vince McMahon just has liability tied to him. Vin- he, Nobody's I, yeah, Dana White he shit. has a like on top like Dana White like Dana White's fucked up for the, for the slapping shit and Dana White yeah, is definitely. like and, and like let's break it down Dana White we're by no means defending Dana White Dana White's a piece of shit uh, but Vince Man is like is also well documented and like I think with on top of the with the the multiple scandals that came out in the last couple of years about everything that he did. I think this keeps it on there and they're like kind of looking like they were just waiting for him to cross cross over the threshold so they could get after they bought the company so they could start whooping his ass. So, uh, yeah, man, it's yeah, they're they they put they putting him through they putting him through the ring over there. Endeavor ain't no different than any other billion dollar company. 
You know what I mean? Like Dana White, like it's easy to, to sweep Dana White's bullshit. We're talking about all that shit. I don't give a fuck because it yeah, is right. I'm, I'm going to run. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll just sweep all that shit. Look, listen, Dana White's getting his fucking crow, you know what I'm saying, by Francis and God, who fucking, yeah, like, eh, 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 in your face because you didn't believe in me. But, like, you, it's easy to sweep in a fucking, like, a video that you'd be like, oh, well, you know, and then she could be like, well, you know, he didn't even do anything to, to multiple, multiple lawsuits. Like, listen, I got to send my lawyers out here and do shit. Yeah, that's the thing about Endeavor. It, I think, like you said, let's think about Endeavor, a big company. Like, if they can, like, look at it and they can be like, well, they kind of, like, sweep it under the rug or whatever. But I think uh, they did. What did they do to Dana White when they punished him? They didn't do nothing, bro. Like, they, like, none of the, like, none of the niggas. Like, listen, if you got a billion dollars, you're not going to get punished, bro. They're going to be like, yo. Like you only get you only get it published you only get it punished. I mean, in the in the court of public opinion, and then when you got a billion dollars or even nine hundred or like a hundred million dollars, like the court of public opinion don't mean shit to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just like your shoes getting untied. Like I can just tie that back up. Yeah, here's another fight, yo. Here's another thinking, fight. That's the thinking of billion. That's the thinking of a lot of like billion dollar sports corporations. Like it's yeah, Dana. You think, like shout out to uh, Daryl. Dana got away scot free. Yeah. Like I remember there was like some there was like some outrage. And then you have like UFC followers who'd be like on Dana White's nuts. They'd be like, hey man, you know, she really was the one who put her hands on it first. So I'm like, bro, I'm like, hey man. We're not getting to the point where you said there's no the first off, there's no re- there's no reason that you ever should put your hands on a woman, period. You know what I'm saying? Use your fucking words. You they teach you that when you're fucking kindergarten. Second off, nigga, like Dana White's pieces, like all them niggas is pieces of shit, dog. Dana White was the lowest of the totem pole. Like it, it, this, this is different when it's, it's the figurehead of the figurehead of the biggest. Like they're the A side of this deal. Like Vince McMahon is the A side. Like Dana White wasn't the fucking A side of this fucking endeavor deal, this merger, nigga. <laughs> like nobody, like they, like UFC's been on the, but been on ESPN for fucking a, a decade before. ESPN even started even mentioning or having WWE people on there. I remember watching that shit on um, on ESPN. I mean, on Fox when fucking the niggas got knocked out and shit. Like niggas, like niggas been over there. Like yeah. nobody really is thinking about Dana White, but this man, you've been around. Like you're a figurehead. You moved this shit. Like you are the A side of the shit, and you're not even supposed to be here to begin with. And, yeah, like, and we, thanks, we have a, like, we have a we have a bunch of niggas that's about the bottom line. More than you, and they have more money than you. What are you gonna say? Facts, and on top of that, to to a bigger extent, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon got away with his shit too. So, uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, they both on some they both on some bullshit. Yeah. But uh, what, what else we go. got for yo facts? Even though they was like, man, they Vince, like I think uh, Dana White did an interview. He was like, yeah, man, Vince McMahon, someone you. Vince McMahon was Vince McMahon is someone you need in your corner. Mm. Yeah, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon, and Dana White are like Blueface and Krishan. Yo, <laughs> yeah, that's Endeavor. Endeavor ain't nothing but fucking Zeus. All right, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. It's, it's the truth, man. You can't trust none of them niggas over there, man. But you gotta watch it anyway because you know, say somebody over there that you like gonna be over there. Oh shit, nigga, that stutter, baby. Okay. No. Yo, man. Speaking of things that we like coming back over here, Kyrie Zane popped up. Popped up at Crown Jewel. She returned to help EO Sky retain the WWE Women's Championship. Good. Yo, man. How, how about them people that didn't like them uh, them Saudi shows? Now, how y'all feeling about them Saudi shows now? Hey. Y'all feeling all right about them now? Yeah, I bet you are. Shut the hell up. You gotta watch it anyway. Hey, look, I, I'll give you my opinion at, on Saudi shows after we talk about this for a second. But um, it looks to be like she's gonna she's gonna um, help EO get out of um, damage control. <laughs> that 360 deal. Because like, if you go back and look at it, what was the reason that EO Scott, or not EO Scott, that Kyrie Zane left? Who because sent her back he jumped her. You know what I mean? Yep, exactly. They and jumped now in they're the in back. the same. Now they're in the same group. She pops up and saves Eo Sky. Eo Sky gonna get her out of the group. Yo, yo, Kyrie Saint Shook Knight. Yo, anybody that wanna be an artist? 
You know what I mean? They don't want to have to worry about Bailey being all in the videos. Yo, Bailey, man. Bailey, yo. Yo, they, they are letting, yo, Bailey was over there looking like a, like a disco snack. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, this, this is, this is the long, this is something like I heard people talking about this shit and I agree with them. Like, like a, like a, like a interlayered women's storyline, like the bloodline or like Judgment Day or like something like something like that. Like this, this shit has the makings of that, especially like what they did to get Kyrie back. And it was the perfect way to bring her back because I know I've heard a whole bunch of stuff about her coming back during the week. And I was like, it could be, it could be as early as um as Crown Jewel. And nigga was like, nah. And then she was like, nah, nigga. Here I am. Yo, facts. So yeah, man. I I don't like, but but what I was gonna say about the Saudi shows is uh those are like this one was very middle of the road. It felt it did feel like a Dragon Ball Z movie. It felt like Cooler's Revenge or Bio Broly or uh, one of those ones. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're like yo, because because I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Those Dragon Ball Z movies be in sometimes, but yeah, it, it just felt like one of the yeah. It felt like one of the middle ones. It didn't feel like the first Broly movie. Or the one where they went back in time for trunks or any of the stuff like that. It this this just felt very middle of the road. I feel like we all knew what was gonna happen, what was going on. The only really thing that happened that was like, oh, you're like, oh shit, was Kyrie Zane coming back and like popping up in the match. That was the only thing that we pretty much got like, you know, got a kick out of. And uh the other thing for me that was like, I was like, yo, that really took me was uh was LA Knight was LA Knight losing and it basically to me it proved that you know he's going to be ready for that world title when it does come around to him i think this was just like a, a like a, t- a trial run to be like hey man look can, can we really trust you in a big like a big like you know spot like that so i oh, feel like this was better for him this is cold day in hell. This is in your house, cold day in hell, like they did with Stone Cold '97. Like, hey, yo, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yo, Crown Jewel. Yeah, I think the fucking thing that got is, yo, John Cena's done. Like, if you if you're gonna go out on a on a shield, that was my favorite part about it. Hey, listen, man. First off, you guys, pause with an extra pause this because this is partially my fault. Every time Solo thumbs a nigga, you know what I'm saying, you ain't got to tag your boy or the pod in it, all right? It's not our fault. <laughs> that was Graham's fault. He told me to say that because he's not here right now to defend himself. So I'm saying that. It was his fault. And, yo, talk about a nigga getting thumbed, pause. <laughs> yo, this nigga trying to kill this nigga, John Cena. In front of children who 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 share for him, yo man, it it was rough. I think it was like maybe like seven or eight, and then John Cena lost, and then he walked off into the sunset. He got like a standing ovation. Everybody was like, man, and Mike Cole was on commentary, was like, yeah, he's the greatest of all time. He's the greatest ever stepping foot in the ring. Kind of like alluding to the fact, like, oh, if this is his last match, then it's like one of the when like he's one of the greats or whatever. But uh, I do think John Cena is gone because they're there. I think like the strike is almost over. The yeah, strike is almost over. over. So, so John Cena was basically like, "Yo, man, I already, I already got the inside, like the inside word. I'm, I'm out." And yeah. and not to mention, like, and you know, we already knew he was leaving around this time anyway. Like that, yeah. that was already a done deal. Yeah, I'm about to start shooting Peacemaker three. You know what I'm saying? When we go back in time with the um with the scepter. Like that's coming out soon, you know what I mean? Like you don't even know what I gotta be. I gotta be in the um the next week with Mark Wahlberg with both stepdads or whatever. Yo, that that already came out. <laughs> yeah, is that we're gonna do another one, you know what I'm saying? Part two of Little Boogaloo, that's coming. Like Yo, this is man. not gonna this is not gonna them Saudi like usually like you know, like what I say, like I tune into them Saudi shows just for the fucking fireworks. But yeah, this one felt like an actual, like you said, it was kind of like it was kind of like middle of the pack. This felt like a regular ass fucking, felt like backlash. 
which if you're gonna if you're gonna get fucking paid a hundred million dollars to give a backlash three times a year, nigga, like, yeah, I'll take it. You know what I mean? Straight up, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta deliver nothing. And the fucking like the matches was fucking decent. And they're letting fucking women do their thing in there, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm saying they're easing up on the outfits, you know what I'm saying, as we've seen from Yo oh, man. Yo, man. But, I love uh, wrestling. <laughs> yo, me too. But, but um no, like, like like a, like a few minutes ago we talked about um Kyrie Zane coming back. Uh it does look like we're having some exits in the women's division. Uh we got Saray. Oh no, the queen she's of the, leaving. Queen of the drop kick, the best drop kick in the business is leaving. Yeah, she's leaving. She's going back to Japan. Uh yeah. She she's going back to Japan. Niggas thought they could sign her. It was like, yo, let's, let's, let's go sign Saray real quick. Nigga, I'm already gone. Like, swear to God. Like, she already gone, son. Like, swear yeah, to man. God. Niggas she's been going, she's going, she's headed back over there because, like, uh, there were reports that WWE was trying to uh, sign her and get her to resign. I, I don't know what, I don't know. Like, I saw some people saying, like, okay, that wasn't true. I saw some people saying that it was true. But, the the word was they were trying to get her resigned. She committed to a contract of several years with uh, I think the company is called Sukiban. Uh, they're a Joshi Japanese wrestling company. They air yeah, on TikTok. They're in New York. Yeah, they're based out of New York or some shit, right? No, they're in Japan. No, but I thought that was like based out of like like I, I seen the shit that she resigned to somebody like in a multi year deal type shit and like niggas like yeah she signed she signed with them. Oh man, like you niggas fumbled the. Maybe yeah, sometimes, she, sometimes she's she's headed back. Back, she, Yeah, she's headed back over there. And to be honest with you, I don't really, I don't really blame her because it's like they haven't really been doing much with her. You know, she had the they did like the little, you know, the glasses and the and the prep school thing, and, and she then transform she just, into a new person. Yeah, and then she would just come around like drop kicking people's faces off of their face and it was like okay how how can we just get the the second one how can we just keep it there and it was like okay well first she was kicking but she was kicking she was kicking bitches faces off so hard that i still have some in my living room like uh, i was just like yo this is like yo why are you like like how do you let that go and then like especially if you had the Kyrie Sane thing going on with the whole little Intertwine damage control alt delete coming up soon. Like it's it like you like you think about shit late and that's and yo man, that's what you get, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Saray, yo man, get your bread. Yo. Facts. But uh there are some some good news. Some good news. I'm just getting signed. So I got money. Some, some good news. Uh I think this co- yo back yo. Uh, I think you guys are right. I think the company is based out of New York. My bad. Oh, uh, man. Shout out to me and Wrestle Talk. Yo. I don't know yeah, people. headquarters in New York City. Yeah, yo, my bad. Man. Yo, that that's on me. That's on me. That's on me for being a know it all. Yo. Hey, listen, <laughs> I was man. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, that, that's my bad. I was like, oh, Japanese women. Oh, it must be. Based in Japan. Oh that's well, oh me. my God, you, that's you me, talk, and, 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 and that's me, and my and the way I'm thinking. I apologize. It, it, it won't happen in the future. We'll, so, we'll get better. We'll learn from this and we'll move forward. But uh, but yeah, there's some good news on the horizon. There are does look like there are some uh, some signings that are headed like in the future. Uh, Julia is expected oh, yeah. at the WWE Performance Center this month, oh, yeah. according to PW Insider. They reported it. Yeah, so we just had Triple to say H, her name a month ago. So yeah, facts. So Triple H lost Saray, and he was like, "You know what? I'm still, I'm still gonna leave with something, man. I'm still gonna come <laughs> out of this deal with somebody." He was like, "I'm gonna go over there." He looked. This man got out the, the what is the PW Women's 500 or 250 or whatever it is, and he looked at it and he was like, "You know what? I'm gonna find somebody on here. I'm gonna find somebody." He was like, "Julia, all right, man." Julia, right. Julia. Oh man, like all the um, the fetish niggas was um, was, was saying was was clamoring about this one. Hey, we're not doing it. Yo, man, I gotta represent for my man's out here. Shout out to my boy. 
You know what I mean? Yo, Julia is one of the she yo, who who was an underground rapper? She's like Tay Rock. You know, she's like Sue Surf. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she's like the one like, yo, then Julia. Julia. Like she is the hottest free agent, and she's not even a free agent yet. She is an independent, like, yo. This is like it would even like, and then like the crazy thing about it to me was that like I heard like as soon as I heard about like Julia even being interested, the thing that I heard about was like yo Julia is going to be at the performance center in a like at the end of the month. He was like yo wait what? Yeah man, like Julia's a big deal, dog. Like I see about Julia more on anywhere than anything that that gets impressions. Like she's an impressions monster. When it comes to wrestling in general, not just like no wrestling in general, it's always Julia. So like just to get her, just like yeah, she's gonna be at the performance center next week. Like wait, well, I, well, all right, like damn, like that. Yo man, strong champion for the New Japan, and you're yo, just gonna like yo, New Japan fucking up. Yo, she's not out. She's not in New Japan, but she's and she's but, yeah, a strong man. champion, ain't she? The NJPW strong champion. Right. I think she. I think she um spin kicked fucking Willow's head off her face before she um got the um the spritz in her eye. I know she's a she's a. That almost made it turn evil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Almost made it turn You're evil. You're right. She's a You're strong right. champion. Uh, she's the she's the current. She is. Let me see. Yeah, she's the current uh, women's strong champion. Oh, I'm with the trial back to back, bitch. I'm two and zero. Oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Man, look, you, you just proved it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know shit about wrestling, man. I like. I don't. I don't know. We're but trying yeah, our man, best out here, y'all. You love us I mean, anyway. We be stumble. We be stumbling through life, man. I like it sometimes, and sometimes I just be sitting. I'm like, man, I really don't like wrestling today. Yeah, man. Let me take the day off. Yeah, man, we we just learned how to say Julia's name right. Cause I was calling, it, like, I thought it was like some 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 fancy attire. I was like, yeah, how do you say this shit? He's like Julia. I was like, yo, I like. Could have been saying it all this time. Yeah, could have you know been saying like, it all this time. Oh my goodness! I beg your shout pardon. Out, yo, shout out, yo, shout out, yo, shout out to um to words. You know what I mean? Yo, man. But uh, yeah, man, she's expected at the WWE Performance Center. Sometimes this mother WWE really stacking the roster with the women. They just got Jay Cargill. Now got Julia, got Kyrie Zane back. Like it's 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 looking up, man. It's looking up. But uh yeah, man, that's it's not it on people, you know, possibly coming back. It's, it's not a, that's not all I, you know, it's not all we heard. Oh shit, Rick Flick going back over there too? Oh uh, man, they said CM Punk was scheduled for a conference call. It's said a feeling within W. Uh, I think it's BWE. BWE reported that he was scheduled for a conference call, and the belief within WWE is that he will be returning. Uh, I've heard. I've seen a couple of different like news outlets try to you know debunk it. Shout out to uh, yo. Shout out to backup Hangman. He was like, "Hey, bro, look, I'm I'm cool with CM Punk's like some of the, some of the niggas that rock with him. He ain't going back." So, you know, it's conflicting reports, you know, w- one person saying it and the other person saying like, yo, man, look, I don't know if that's true or not. But you, at the end of the day, we're just going to have to wait until Survivor Series to see what happens. And uh, Survivor Series War Games was confirmed. War Games. Was confirmed at Crown Jewel. And on Monday Night Raw, in the end, we got the teams. Oh, yeah. To be continued. We to got the team so far. We got Judgment has, Day. Yeah, you gotta have all them niggas. Versus Cody Rhodes, uh, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, and Seth Rollins. Will this be Cody Rhodes' first War Games match? Yeah, this is, for, this is gonna be his first War Games match. Like, I think he was in Blood and Guts, but this will be his first War Games match. And I thought it was really cool that they put him on the poster. And he's getting to wrestle in the match that his father created under its actual name. Yo, and then he and then he like went to war for the fucking like he went to court for this name and lost, and he got to come back and be a part of it anyway. Like <laughs> that's kind of gangster. Like I kind of like that. 
Like, he was trying to get all that shit, you know what I'm saying? He only got fucking Spring Stampede and fucking Hog Wild. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, War Games belongs to us, though. So, like, I'm glad. Like, I think it might be Seth Rollins' first War Games match, too. Yeah, man. Like, uh, this will be, you know, this will be his first Blood and Guts match. I mean, I, even, I don't even think he was in a Blood and Guts match. I think he wasn't in any of those. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? So, like, he so, gets look, it's going to be a really big deal. Yeah, man. Yeah, this will be. got started out. So I, so I, was like, yo, I think that I thought that was cool that they put him on. I thought that was really cool, like a really cool thing for him. But uh, yeah, man, we got some oh, other God. matches announced. For, we got some other matches announced for um, for uh, for Survivor Series. Uh, let me see. I had a second ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got uh, Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Starks for the uh, Women's World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, that's going down. Oh, shout out to Ankle. I can't even call it. We're, we're going to drop the Ankle Waste name from you because you've been you've been out there balling, Zoe. You know what I mean? Now I just made that shit up because I was drunk and I was making fun of you. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Zoe is out there. You know what I mean? Like, I know people was a little upset because she was just in a match in, um, at Crown Jewel and, like, lost or whatever for the, uh, for the belt. But, you know, whatever. Ain't your fault, you know what I'm saying? You are one of the four women that lost to the greatest Australian to ever live. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that's probably what's going to happen over here at Survivor Series, but you know what I'm saying? At least you can have a showcase match. Though Zoe Stark is to feel like she's like, you want to build up this women division, you know what I'm saying? Go start with someone like Zoe Stark who can do everything. She can do everything. Yeah, so I fuck, yeah, so I fuck, I fuck with Zoe Stark's, like, you know, like in the ring and shit. She be saying some goofy shit sometimes, but you know, I mean, it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? You are who you are. I respect it. Yeah, that was that was my thing. I was like, yo, I'm pretty sure this match is gonna be a really good match, but I'm like, ah mm, I'm not good. looking forward to the promos or anything else leading up to it. Like, but, like what are you but what are you gonna do? Match. Like she's in like she's a whole like and that's the thing with Rhea, like she's a whole leader of a whole fucking group. <laughs> like like I gotta be Otis Redding of this fucking temptations. Shit, and then like, and then they have to fucking like lead a whole division on the channel that uh just got uh, my 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 main division. Like, come on, like my main competition. Like, yo, get the fuck out of here, man. So like, uh, hopefully they can make the best out of what they can make the best of while she's in like four different storylines and shit. But yeah, yeah. that would definitely be for the purists out there, especially for me that want to see some fucking chin locks and fucking super kicks. So shout out to that. Yeah, man. Yo, who is yeah, who is fucking Shinsuke gonna fight? I don't know. I'm thinking like he's gonna end up doing like <clears throat> like uh like an open challenge or something like that. And maybe maybe Randy answers the call because uh, people are saying that Randy Orton's gonna return around then too. Maybe CM Punk answers the call. I don't know what they what they have for that. And also uh we got another match announced. We got Gunther versus The Miz. Mm. Hey. Gun- yeah. And I think it originally was supposed to be Gunther versus The Miz versus Ivar because they were supposed to do, like, because they had the, the Fatal 4-Way match and everything like that. And oh, Ivar pinned Ricochet and uh, The Miz who rolled through Ivar, like, you know, I think Ivar hit Ricochet, and then um, Bronson was supposed to hit Miz, but he was supposed to oh, move yeah, and yeah, yeah. at the same time, but the referee's bum ass, you know what I mean, he was decided to be like, oh. No, 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 uh, Ricochet got his shoulder up. Well, the Miz was pinning Bronson Reed. The Miz got his shoulder, I'm not the Miz, Ricochet kind of had his shoulder up, so the re- so they were counting it, and they were like, yeah, he had his shoulder up, so the Miz is the winner, and after the match, Ivar attacked the Miz, and he was like, yo, man, they're, they're going to have a match next week. Yeah, I think they got a, um, yeah, they got a match coming up, but I don't think nothing, like, he already won that shit, so, like, I know what the match is for, like, match is for what, bragging rights, nigga? Like, this ain't bragging rights. I don't know what they I don't know what they're doing for that, but yeah, man, he's gonna be in it. Last week we you know we talked about the man a little bit, but I like he pulled off he he pulled off his little you know his little moves. He did like he you know he was he turned into Lucha Miz and oh. and bruh. Like what cat what cats call him? He called him uh Mike Mysterio. I was like, hey, that's, that's all right, all right, all right, 
Cash, you know what I mean? Let's see, like, see, look, man, the Knicks win four games, see what happens. That's why you can't. Yeah, like, yeah, man, he, he did his little moves. And like I said, he be tricking niggas. And yeah. I'm one of the niggas he be tricking. <laughs> like, I'm I'm one of them. When he be doing that stuff, I'll be like, oh, man, Miz cooking, man. I'm like, man, bruh. You talking to a nigga who watched Miz since he was on Real World Season 10, all right? You can't fool me, Miz. All right? You are good at what you do, but, yo, I, like, I know people was like, oh, how do you feel about babyface Miz now? Oh, oh, you think Miz is going to be a good babyface? You don't remember 2016? I was like, oh, he was putting on the he figure four. That- many, many of y'all niggas like with the figure four that he put on? Like, oh, that one, that Miz? Fuck out of here. wasn't a baby face, though, <laughs> in 2016. That's why I be trying to put over people. I'm like, yo, man, he wasn't a baby face. But, like, honestly, like, I can't, like, if he does, like, the, if he takes the 2016 stuff that he did with Dolph Ziggler and everything like that, and that kind of, like, attitude that he had, where he was like, yo, man, y'all, y'all tried to say I wasn't anything in the beginning, but now I'm going to show y'all that I'm everything. When he put the IC title on a pedestal and made it the most, like, wanted title. If he takes that attitude and transfer it over to being a face character against him, against Gunther, I'm with it. Dope. I'm with it 100% if he can do that. But I don't know if if that's possible for, for them to get him to do that. I don't know. But if they're able to make that transfer, I'm on board with the Miz um, babyface turn. Bro, who are you? You Baker Mayfield, nigga? You still got a motherfucking chip on your shoulder? Where was that chip on your shoulder? We was running around with belts that you didn't deserve. The, the people said didn't want now. Like now you want to have the chip on your shoulder. Like that's how niggas is looking at that shit now. They're just looking at like, oh, oh now you want to be a, like you 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 want to pull that shit against like so out of all the niggas you could have pulled that shit with you would have pulled this shit against the fucking this fucking murderer right here against the, the Thanos of wrestling. What you want to you want to pull that shit against him? Mm mm. Like, 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 yeah. Bobby Lashley, like Bobby Lashley pulled up and took your belt. You know what I mean? Like you didn't have none of that energy for him, but you got that energy against this fucking, this fucking, <laughs> this, this Austrian murderer right here. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's like cool. that's the that's the thing about like the the Miz for the last few years. Like, I don't like he's done some stuff here and there where I've been like, oh, that's cool. But for the most part, I've been even looking at the heel stuff. I'm like. You know, he's doing like uh the, the tiny ball stuff and like the stuff that he did with um uh John Morrison, you know, little things like here and there. I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm not really I'm not really into this. So if if this leads to him kind of getting back that chip on his shoulder and be like, yo, man, look, I y'all, y'all bet it against me, and now I'm gonna show everybody why I'm the best and everything like that. If he can if he can channel that, like I said a second ago. I'm all for it, but uh, you can't bet against what else? You got that many suits, nigga. Like you got too many suits for you to have a chip on your shoulder, my nigga. Like why you got all them suits and shit for? If you got a chip on your shoulder, blood. You no, know, you have you have cufflinks on your shoulder or shoulder links. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see what else. You got a TV show and shit. Tell him I got a I got a chip on my shoulder, nigga. Like no, you got chips and dip on your shoulder, my nigga. And then they yeah. gave them both to you. Yo, I'm glad you talk. I'm glad you you said uh, you said the magic word. You said TV show. You said TV show. There's a there's a TV show this week. They got a deal. Who did? They got a deal. Which ones? NXT. Hickenbottom. Hickenbottom got the niggas paying some more. Like yo, shout out to the book. Yeah, girl this year, man. man. CW. Uh, CW is going to be picking up NXT in 2024 in October 2024. Cool. Move for over. five years, for five years, I know it had been previously reported by other wrestling like uh, news outlets that NWA was supposed to be going to the CW. It looks like they've changed their minds and they instead picked up NXT for five years. This is the third WWE show that would be airing on uh, CW. It's you know SmackDown, Saturday Morning Slam, and now NXT. And to be honest with you. This kind of fits the vibe of old school CW. I have been informed that CW right now is in a, a changeover, kind of like rebranding phase. 
after they got rid of all like the DC shows and all, like the the teen dramas and everything like that. Apparently, it's kind of yeah. like uh, it's like a Family Christian Network now. But oh, I, I need them to know. Anyway. I need Spider-Man. them to know. I need them to know. This is not what NXT is. No, yeah. I don't know if you know you like you was you got big dog Hickenbottom coming in there, you know what I'm saying? On his book of the year shit. About to have all the titties on CW. Yo, oh my God. Yo, what a, yo, the, the step in and take like like who was who was that that got uh, that was supposed to get before the uh the clip was supposed to get before they got Paul George? It was like we to get him. Like, nah, we got Paul George instead. Like to to, to fumble your own deal. <laughs> because yeah, and and the reason why the deal was fumbled, why a lot of people think the deal was fumbled, uh, James Mitchell, James Mitchell, uh, he had came out during an entrance in NWA, and he did like a little, you know, a little, 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 a little in, line, little, in, little indoor skiing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's a little, you know, little, little, little Winter Olympics. Yeah, man. You know, went to Aspen, you know, he, as we call it. Yeah. And uh, he kind of, he, you know, he did a little, he did a little line. And uh, it, it, I don't think it went over well. Yo, who, who was, yo, Billy Corgan? The cocaine look, look. spot. Yo, who? Man, I think who that a lot of people, was, you, I'm sorry. My bad, bro. Look, look, look. Who thought that was a good idea? Like, you can't do cocaine on TV unless you do, unless, you, unless it's Law and Order SVU. <laughs> and even then they're not showing and even then they're not showing you putting your face in it. You see like a little bit, you know, underneath their nose. That's it. You don't yeah, see the, like them the going like, away. You see, <laughs> yeah, you see them do like you see them, you know, roll up the, you know, roll up the dollar bill. They they put it to their nose and they do like, you know, a very classy pan up where you don't see their face, but you definitely hear the snorting. Yeah. You could have did that, but you know, Billy Corp was in there talking about like, yo, how do you how do you like you just got that deal? Like the like the ink wasn't even dry on the contract yet, and it was like, yo, we're gonna put these niggas on the um, on the app that we don't even have yet. Yo, but uh it, I thought it was really wild. I'm like, this nigga, like, for those of you who don't know, James Mitchell, that 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 dude in W and not W in ECW was known as the Sinister Minister. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This is, y'all, y'all, y'all lost your TV deal because of the Sinister Minister. That's crazy to me. Bruh. So now we're going to have to do... We're gonna have to, now, NXT going to come in there just like... Just like Johnny Gill. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> y'all need a nigga single. Uh, you can't stay in the rain real quick. You feel me? And it took your spot, and they got paid more than you. That's yeah. Uh, I'm I'm reading it right now. It says, according to uh, Hausman's site, the CW social media team were fl- I mean, not team. The CW social media accounts were flooded with comments about what appeared to be a cocaine spot on the NWA show that upset the higher ups at the network some of whom are now making an active push to have NWA content believed to be weekly show power and reality show to air on the app rather than have it part of their TV schedule. So, yeah, man, they're like, OK, well, if we're going to have it on here, it'll be on the app. We're not putting this on TV. And that's crazy, man. <laughs> but we have homeboys on outer space on this. <laughs> <laughs> We have forty seven. We have forty seven seasons of Moesha on here, but yo, cocaine is where we draw on the line. Yo, man, we had all oh, we had that that last bullshit season of one on one. Oh my god, with them niggas, well, Marcus Houston was cutting hair and shit. Like we had all that shit, but you know, coke like they, <laughs> yo, the sinister minister. Yo, you got to jump that nigga, man. Yo, everybody got to fight him. You definitely gotta jump in because like, bro, you t- you taking you taking money out of my pocket. <laughs> Yo, and NWA, <laughs> because you were because you a cokehead. <laughs> no, NWA should know better. You know what I'm saying? Because you niggas is the one that was trusting the process with that fucking with the fucking unathletic fucking non smart dinosaur over there with the belt. Like, like, so yeah. I, like, listen, look, listen, Billy Corgan, tough break, nigga. There's always Chub Rock, nigga. Spend that smash of pumpkins money, nigga. Yeah. 
You got EC3 out here making statements about you too. EC3 made a statement and was like, hey man, look, we just hoping this dude finds some time in between his music to actually run the company that he's supposed to be running. And it's believed to be that uh, they're going to hire a creative team to kind of take the reins of creative going forward. But yeah, man, this is a mess. I hire some adults. Like, I don't know. I know I seen Graham say this shit. Like, yo, Billy Corgan is the nigga that y'all want Tony Khan to be. Bro, Billy Corgan, like, this man was running TNA like years ago and they were like, yeah, man, you should just sell TNA to, to Billy Corgan. And he could have bought it at the time because I think they were selling it for kind of like dirt cheap at the time too. So I, so he could have bought it, but he was like, you know what? I'm going to go out. Um, after they kind of told him, they were like, hey, look, it was kind of like a, a Jimmy Johnson. It's kind of like a Jimmy Johnson cowboy situation. They were like, hey, you making us look better? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, say, yo, yo, why everybody like you more than me? Yo, yeah, thanks. So, like, bro, went over to NWA, but it's been, like, a, kind of like a mess over there. And it's, like, and I remember when uh, TNA, not TNA, uh, AEW got their deal. He was out here talking about, yeah, man, we got offered that deal at first. Like, it, it's like the, it's like the... It's like one of the girls at the wedding. She's like, yo, man, you know, he used to talk to me back in the day. And it's like, yo, man, this is the happiest day of my life. You just standing over the corner being a fucking hater. That's what that's what Billy Corgan looked like when he said that. It's like now, like you actually get another TV deal on network television and get it fucked up by the sinister minister. But you you ruined like, listen, like you tripped over your own shit. Like it's like them niggas threw you the bouquet. Like speaking of being at a wedding, like they threw you the bouquet and you dropped it. And then Shawn Michaels picks it up. <laughs> like, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? The seat yeah, number. Right back up. He's like, yo, man, look, I'm cool off of this. Yo, like right said, after All-American? Like, like, yeah, it's lit. <laughs> yo, they got to have Coop show up and do commentary. Yo, Coop, yo, Coop, yo. Yo, when Coop walks out Trick Williams against fucking Carmelo Hayes, my nigga. Speaking look. of Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes, yeah, let's oh, yeah, get, we, can end, we can end it on that. We can, we can end it on this. Uh, yeah, Trick Williams came out to confront Carmelo Hayes about what happened and who attacked him a few weeks ago on NXT right before the fatal four-way match, uh, which should have been a fatal five-way match. Um, he asked, he, he all but asked him if he was the one that attacked him. They kept dancing around it. He didn't ask him. And every time Trick Williams was on the verge of asking if he did it, Carmelo Hayes would do some, like, some Roman Reigns-level gaslighting. He was like, oh, man. Did I what? Did I did I believe in you? Did I did I try to protect you? Yo, did you hear the new Drake album? You didn't like it too, huh? Yeah. Anyway, you know, Craig Craig got fired yesterday. Oh shit! Look, just, it's, it's, oh shit! It's Brian Pillman. It's Brian Pillman King Jr. Just derailing the conversation whenever he could, <laughs> and it was some. It was there were some moments in there when I looked at Trick Williams and he was talking. I'm like, this guy is gonna like. I know we say it all the time, but I'm like. This guy is going to be a star. Like the way he was like, hey, man, I put my heart and my soul into doing those entrances for you and to announce you to come out there. He was like, when am I going to get that? When are you going to do that for me? When is my time to shine? When am I going to get the ball? He's like, because like, yo, I feel like you should be in my corner the way I was in your corner. And I'm not really feeling that. And uh, and like he he. He goes over it and the way that he put like the emotion and the and the conviction in his voice. I'm like, we already know it, but I'm going to say it again. This dude's going to be a star. And Carmelo Hayes is just throwing out daggers, too. He was like, hey, man, who was here to pick you up when your NFL career failed? I was like, bro, oh, bro look. Oh, why did you I, say that? <laughs> I, like, bro, I, I would have fought you right there. Hey, man. Oh, why are you bringing that up? Yeah, man, you you real tough. You real tough saying that to a nigga that's bigger than you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, excuse me. But uh, what what you said is that gonna go about Lexus King coming out? Lexus King came out, and this nigga Lexus King is a bum. Like I like I've seen people like like a few weeks ago when he made his debut. Graham, you know, was was kind of was kind of trying to be you know hopeful. Was trying to you know give him his props and everything like that. But he's 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 still asked to me, bro. This man came out and a promo that he cut. It was very, you know, 
I could tell, you know, this is kind of a script for you because he was like, yeah, man, the, the dude who you, you don't know who it is, man. You, it could be the dude that, that's twisted and dark on the inside. And I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up, man. Who, nigga, Mortis, nigga? R.I.P.? Who, who's twisted and dark on the inside, nigga? Who, Joe Gacy? Did Joe Gacy do it? Who did it, my G? What about, what about Wesley that just came back? No, what Wesley not even worried about this. Wesley is so, so far away from this. And hang him high, like when he came out with that theory, Carmelo Hayes was like, Yeah, man, you 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 know, you might got a point. This man is trying to try to get rid of any type of like blame. Because he even asked Carmelo, I'm not Carmelo, he even asked Trick Williams, he was like, Did you see who hit you? Because Trick was no Trick was like, Yo, man, I didn't even see who hit me. He was like, So you didn't see who hit you. And he lingered on that for a very, very, very long time. It's suspicious. No, that's plausible deniability, nigga. Like, nigga, look, look, you didn't see who hit you, right? right, So so you don't know who did it, nigga. I think you did. Like, what you mean you think, nigga? Like, you didn't see it. So how can you think, nigga? Because you got hit in the back of the head, nigga. I didn't do it. All right? Give me a hug. I promise. That nigga trick fucking get that nigga fucking try to punch up fucking King, try to punch up King Lexus. Pillman the third, you know what I mean, in the face, and then he missed, and then he hit mellow. But you know, that felt good, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we saying when you accidentally do some shit, you be like, but it feels like, oh, okay, I didn't mean to do that shit, but you know what I'm saying? Ha ha. I pick you up, big dog, you know what I'm saying? It's like Mayweather when he fought Logan Paul. He was like, no, 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 don't fall down yet, you know what I'm saying? We got two more rounds. Hey, bro, check in clear, yeah, man. They told me if I get they told me I got 12 rounds. I, I love you, mellow. Yeah. And then Melo yeah. gave that Melo gave that fucking that that fucking freak ass nasty look at the end like <laughs> <laughs> freak ass boy. You that? Yo, it's a freak ass boy. You know what I'm saying? He looked up. You know what I'm saying? Like yo, he got like you know, like you get an argument with your girl. She slap you, but she but she but she stay anyway. You just like <laughs> yeah. I got but, away with it. Yeah, <laughs> I I went again. <laughs> But bro, yes. like, like, yo, man, him, like, him looking directly into the camera and kind of like, like, Michael Jackson at the end of Thriller, he was like, yo, man, I know I got away with it. But also, uh, I, I saw another theory, and I wish I could credit the person who came up with this theory because it was really good. They, they said that uh, it could be that Carmelo saw whoever did it. He just didn't say anything to Trick Williams. And then, you know, he gets mad about it because Trick Williams was accusing him and he just goes off and attacks him anyway. I was like, hey, you, you might got a little something. Yeah, what if Carmelo was just walking around when the nigga was talking about this, like, this, I'm about to jump Trick, nigga, because fuck this shit. And then he was just like, Trick or something, like, I'm like, damn. And then, like, he sees he see him over somewhere else talking about it, like, man, we're going to beat this nigga ass for real. Like, he's right around the corner. He was like, damn. And then, like, he talked to Trick twice. And he was like, yo, I could tell this nigga. I ain't about to tell this nigga. Yo, fast. And after it happened, he was like, oh, shit, what happened, blood? I didn't even know. Yo, it, to, to me, I'm like, I, I, yo, man, this is kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, what was it, the OC? They knew that uh, AJ Styles was, get, was about to get jumped. And they were just like, hey, man, look. Man, it ain't got nothing to do with my business. They're like, yo, that's my nigga, but uh, I'm gonna stay out of it. I told him not to get involved. I told him not to start, not to be back there talking shit. You know, it is what it is. Hey, big dog, listen, man, mama told me to mind my business, dog, and you better, you gotta handle that yourself, big homie. Like, I didn't tell you to fucking hop in my match, but I didn't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind it, though. But, you know, like, yo, whatever, man, listen, I didn't do it because you didn't, you didn't see what happened. Yo, man. Hey. Hey. Yo, yo, you're right. But uh, you got anything else? Yo, let's have an NXT. Yo, Zia Lee is um, going to um, kick Lyra Valkyrie's head off, allegedly. Yo, she kicked the shit out of uh, some random ass. Uh, probably the same dude that Jake Paul got that punch. Yo, what if that was the same dude? Like, yo, what if he got spit kicked by Zia Lee and punched by Jake Paul in a week span? Like, yo, I hope you got 500 grand for that. But yo, yeah. Zaylee is back. Uh, I need yo Roxanne and um, yo Roxanne is just yo yo the women's division is gonna be just fine. 
Yeah. Shout out to Lola Vice. Shout out to Roxanne. Shout out to NXT with your new deal. You know what I mean? You're going to be getting paid more money, which means more money for everybody. Spread it out evenly, hick and bottom. I know you can do it because you don't need the money. Yeah. Man, it's still living off that Saudi check that he got a few years ago, man. He, he's straight. Yeah, I don't even know what happened that job. You know what I'm saying? But they just gave him some free money. You know what I'm saying? Something happened, but we don't talk about that because that never happened. We struck that from the record like WrestleMania 9. Yeah, man. It's not, it's not canon. Yo, shout out to you, Daryl. We're, we're glad we can make it uh, a more enjoyable experience for you. Shout out to you, man. We appreciate yeah. you as well. But uh, yeah, that's it's still, it's still to come. You know what I'm saying? Question of the day. You know what the question of the day is, y'all? Where's Graham? That's the question Yo, that's, of the day. <laughs> Yo, hey, man. But uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. I don't have anything else. Do uh, you have anything else? Uh, no, man. Um, I am still your champ. As you can see, I'm going to be your champ forever. Forever in a day, like the first day twenty six album, and um, hey, you know, we are we are out of here. We are the greatest podcast ever, the hey. Public Enemies podcast. Make sure you listen to Keeks every Monday live and every Tuesday when it comes out. Make sure you listen to us every Wednesday live and every Thursday when it comes out. I am the champ, your champ, Jizzle at yeah, that's me, yeah underscore that's underscore me underscore. Go ahead, Ben. And uh, you can follow us across all social media platforms at the enemies P E three. Um, if you, you know, do, if you like more content from us, that isn't specifically about wrestling because we got other content. We talk about like on, on a Patreon, we get down, man. We talk about, we talk about old sitcoms, man. We talk about 90 sitcoms. We talking about sports. We getting through the, you know, P E three S P N. We over there. We talking about that. We have, we 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 do um, talk about wrestling. We talk about like old pay per views and everything like that. Power rankings. Uh, you know, sometimes we, you know we just have conversations just to have it, man. Or the extra episodes. But either way, show your support. Show your love, man. Go to the Patreon. Public enemies. Patreon. Yo, man, is there? Is there for the taking, man? Hey, also. And if you don't want to remember to, to to type in everything for, you know, for the social media, or whatever, for even Patreon or whatever, because we got a Facebook group, too, you know, go over and join that. You can do the easy thing. You do what I do. You can go to Linktree on Twitter at the enemies PE3. There's a link tree right there. And it shows you every place that we are, everywhere we're at, what we're doing. It shows you that Discord, Facebook group, all that. Go ahead. Tap into that. You can follow me on my personal account. At underscore Son of Mars underscore yo, Twitter, man, Instagram, follow, TikTok. Yo, follow and, and, Graham. Follow yeah. Graham too. You know what I'm saying? At oh my at, god, Graham. O says O H M Y capital G O D Graham capital G R A M. The king of the right, fucking thank church. You the, thank you for the lesson, man. <laughs> you, know, you never know what you're saying, but now you know, nigga. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. Uh, what does what what Graham say at the end of the show? Take you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, beat us there. Don't meet us there. You feel me? Uh, you know what I mean? The uh, Bay Area shit. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Deuces. Peace up. A-Town down. I'm the champ forever. All right. <laughs> All right, man. It's like that, right? Usually like that. Yeah, yeah something like that. Something. Hey, man. Y'all take something it easy. Like yeah, you're welcome. All I ask is when you lay your head on that pill at night, you know, I gave you everything I had. You did. I gave you everything I had.